So we just moved them. And uh, as you can see, they're quite happy. A lot of them are foraging, looking for bugs and stuff. Um, looks like they're pretty thirsty this morning. And of course, they always get over to the food eventually, but doing really well. And we've only lost one out, one or two out here in the last couple weeks. Um, they're about seven weeks old now. We're getting ready to, uh, to process them here um, in the next two weeks or so. And so uh, they'll fatten up a little bit here, hopefully. A little on the small side right now, so we're giving them an extra week this time around. Basically, see, this is where they were yesterday. And we move them once a day still. Um, we'll probably have to start moving them twice a day because they're starting to really lay down a thick layer of manure. But uh, you can then see two days ago, three days and four days ago, just in this little row alone. And basically you can tell in the background, we're walking them through the orchard. Um, so each day we just keep moving them a little bit by little bit. And we've done this strip over here to my right. And uh, we're gonna go back around the other side down the middle of that aisle next. But uh, basically the goal here is to, to let the birds fertilize the ground for us, help grow our trees. Um, so we're turning our meat is turning our ground into you know better fertilized land to produce better stronger trees healthier trees and then hopefully more fruit so we're really maximizing you know the uh the value of the of having these birds and we'll see in the spring what the trees look like after all this fertilizers had time to really break down and get absorbed into the ground and the meat birds don't scratch like if you put chick uh, egg layers around trees they'll scratch and yeah. dig up roots and these guys will forage a little bit, but they don't, they won't dig up they any roots. They won't dig or scrape or anything, so they're safe coming through here. Um, you wouldn't want to put them near low bushes probably, they'd still probably peck and eat leaves and, and berries and things like that, but um, you might've saw in the video when I moved them, we used two by fours around some of the, the uh, open spots because the ground's not perfectly level here. And so when we move the big chicken tractor around, um, I'll bend down and look through the front, through the front out back here and usually I can see daylight coming through and tell where my high and low spots are. So I'll put two by fours in there just to keep predators out. Um, we did have a weasel get in and get one of them a, about a week ago, um, but we haven't had any other issues yet. If we had a problem, a, a reoccurring problem with predators like that, um, we would put an electric fence up around them. Um, we have electric netting and we could easily have done that if we needed to, but um, so far so good. It's really only been the one. And uh, like I said, we've had really good Really good luck with these guys. They've been really good. Um, they've been healthy. Hopefully we don't lose any um, before processing them and we'll be happy with that. So today is the last day before we processed our birds. Uh, tomorrow's a big day. Um, so today there is no food. Today we just move them twice. We make sure we give them good water. Um, and then uh, this way it helps keep their digestive system clear and empty for when we process them tomorrow. Um, just makes it for a cleaner, easier time when you're, you're doing the gutting process. Um, so we're gonna move them. Um, they'll still get grass and bugs, of course, but um, not putting the, the grain in just, again, helps clean, make, make it a cleaner, uh, cleaning process tomorrow for us. So um, they're getting pretty big, as you can see. They're pretty pleased with the size of the birds this year. Um, we've lost a few, but um, I don't think too many more than normal, so that's good. Good. They get slow as they get fat, so you definitely gotta be careful. The more level the ground, the easier the tractor slides, and the less you have to lift up on it, the less chance you are of dropping it on somebody's foot or wing. So we're looking pretty good. Come on, bud. Are we almost off, Jake? That'll be it for today. All right, that's good. So now we'll go finish setting up and then we'll start sending a couple kids out. No, we'll take one bird at a time over to get cleaned up. No, no, no. A little further. 
Alright, that's good, Jake. That's fine. Yeah. Alright, that's it. So here's ours. Now, here's this. Uh, you might be wondering what is this? We use this for hooping us because they like hiding under there. So we will take this and just here, hold it still so we can see it. So we'll take this and just look there. And hold it and then somebody will come and grab it. Well, just me. But my sister is, I think, is going to put their feet today. All right, so it is processing day. Um, so I'm just gonna go through the various stations real quick with you guys, show you how we do this. Um, this is, I think, our fifth time doing it in the past few years. We've typically done it once or twice a year, um, but our killing station's here. Um, so we have two cones set up, buckets to catch the blood. Um, we typically dump the blood in like our blueberry bushes and stuff that benefits them, so we do that. Um, it's low. The reason I keep it low to the ground is because it, the higher up it is, the more chance for wind or even the chickens flopping around to spray the blood everywhere. And so if you don't want to end up sprayed with red blood droplets everywhere, uh, my suggestion is to keep it low to the ground so that way the, the bucket's real close to the bottom of the cone. Um, we like having two because usually we'll let one sit for 20, 30 seconds of bleed out while we get the second one in the other cone and get started here. Um, so the next station is our Skolvin station. Um, this is a 55 gallon dr a drum barrel, as you can see. We've, um, my uncle and I have fitted it with uh, a 220 hot water heater. So if you look inside, there's two hot water elements. You probably can't see those very well on the video. It's a little dark out and cloudy this morning. But this will get the water temperature to about 150 degrees. Um, there's a thermostat on the unit. So we set it at 150. It'll get it to there in about an hour. Uh, and it'll hold it there the entire time you're you're using it. So it's really great. You do not have to water, do not have to worry about the water temperature fluctuating uh, as you uh, dip chickens in there. It doesn't cool it off much at all. It'll constantly keep it at 150 for you. You're not fighting the propane tank if you're using like a turkey fry or anything like that. Uh, this has been a lifesaver for us. Uh, last year we processed 70 meat birds with this and it saves two hours from the previous year with the same amount of birds. So it's an absolute lifesaver. It will save you a lot of time. Uh, right over here, quickly, right by it, is uh, the plucking machine. Uh, we rent the plucker from Cedar Stump Farms. So a little shout out to them guys. Um, wonderful guys, wonderful people. Uh, we rent this from them every year. Um, eventually we'll probably buy our own, but for now we still rent it. Um, he's very reasonably priced, so um, seek him seek him out if you're looking to rent the plucker. This thing is massive. It'll do up to four birds at a time. Uh, we typically just have one to two at a time in here, but it does the does the trick quite well. Um, you got your water uh, going in here from the hose, uh, electricity on the other side to turn it. And so, as you can see, we have a pretty logical setup. We we do our killing station there. We dunk them in the scalding tank and straight into the plucker. Once the plucker is done, some, one of the kids will grab them and bring them over to the table. And uh, we haven't completely set this up yet, but we'll have two, three people sitting here at the table. And uh, one of our kids will typically take off the feet and the heads. The next person will do the neck. And then the last person will do the evisceration part, getting the guts and everything and out. And the feet and the head cheesing. I it's, a, it's a chilly, like 38 degrees this morning in South Carolina, so you don't get to pick them, but this is uh, what we got. So here, after they're eviscerated, we've got everything done over there. We come here, we take the hose, we rinse out the body cavity really well, we get any bits of lungs or other junk out of there. We make sure it's rinsed off really good, clean. Um, typically, there's a little bit of lungs and junk, junk like that, so we get that all cleaned out. And then right here, we have our cold water tank, and this is how we cool them down quickly. So this water today will be nice and cold. So uh, we'll put them in here and we'll let them sit in there till the whole entire process is done. Once we're done everything else, we'll t start taking them out of here. We'll get them on a table, let them dry and, and uh, air out a little bit. And then depending on what you're gonna do with them, you could then you know put them in the fridge, let them sit overnight like we do, and we'll piece them out tomorrow. Um, some people might just take them straight to the cooler. You might take them straight to the, the a hot water part and uh, 
use a shrink wrap bag and go ahead and shrink wrap them and get them in the, the cooler that way. It's totally up to you. The idea with this is just to cool them off as fast as possible so you don't spoil any meat. All right, so let's real quick just talk about what you can do with your chickens, all right? Um, we don't waste a lot of these birds. We keep most of the parts and use them, but there's a lot to be done. Um, first thing we do is we, we cut the feed off and we save the feed. Why do you save the feet? Well, you could do bone broth and things like that with it, but we keep them for our dog. Um, we freeze them in a gallon freezer bag, um, and then we give them to our dog one or two a day as a treat. She absolutely loves them. She goes nuts over them. They're really good for her. They're good for her joints, and she absolutely enjoys them. So uh, keep the feet if you have a dog. Um, they're great. Uh, we also keep the necks. Now uh, the necks are good to keep. Uh, inside we keep the gizzards, the hearts, and the livers. So you can keep all three of those organs. Um, they're great for certain things. Uh, sometimes your pets might like them. Sometimes people like them. Um, most of my family grew up eating livers and they love the chicken livers. Um, I do not so much myself, but we do have family that does. So we keep them for those people and we, we give them to our family and friends who like that. Um, we can also keep, obviously keep the whole bird itself, but also after you piece them out, we get to, you know, drumsticks and thighs and wings and you get your breast meat. Well, you're stuck with a back. And the back actually has quite a bit of meat on it. There's a lot of bones, of course. So we keep those as well, we freeze those. My wife takes them and she uh, uh, puts them in a rotisserie pan or a crock pot basically, boils them down and uses that for bone broth and for bone meal. We take the bones later and we'll, we'll dehydrate them essentially, grind them up into bone meal. So there's a lot of things you can do with this. Very little has to go to waste. Uh, so just wanna encourage you guys to find ways to use all these different parts of the animal so that you're as efficient with it as possible. Okay. This is just how we do it. We're not. Uh, experts by any means. Um, we've gotten pretty efficient at it. Um, we can get 75 birds done in about two hours, maybe a little over that, depending on how many adults we have helping. Um, we usually have two adults or two to four adults helping us as well because we have other families who split these birds with us. It's a large number of birds. Um, but uh, again, with our kids, um, we did 24 of these guys a few weeks ago. It took about three hours with just uh, six of us. So um, it's a pretty good process, I think. Um, there's probably little ways to make improvements here and there, but um, we'll let you guys, you know, pick and choose what you like about our setup, what you don't like about it. Go ahead and put the comments in there. If you find things that were helpful to you guys, let us know. Um, if you see things in other videos or by other people doing things that you think are better that we can improve on, let us know. We, we're always looking to learn and we're happy to share. Um, so thank you guys. Like and subscribe to the video. What do you want? Sit.